Welcome to the uh, Studio 987 in the Bing Lounge. It's presented to you by Seaport Auto and uh, Sun Drop and Pop Chips. There's a big rack of Pop Chips up there, too. So if you guys feel a little Feed hungry, yourself. snag one off there, grab yourself a soda pop, okay? So uh, we're going to be doing the meet and greet after we do all this type of stuff. But without further ado, please welcome to the stage, Andy Gibson. Be careful. <laughs> It's a pretty cool pick, Andy. What's what is your it? There's face a picture on, on it? it? It's got my face on it. It's got your face. I thought it was Jesus for a second, but I was like, yeah, you guys look pretty Basically close. Basically the same. It's like, I just saw a Jesus sighting on a guitar pick. It was so cool. We look like twins today, Andy. I know. We're wearing like the same colors. Color. we got the same hair. I know. We could pull it's it off. It's all my hair. Rude. We got like the same boots on. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like a little love we affair. We called each other you. first. We want to make and sure what's your that guitar player's name, Andy? This is Damian Martin. Hi, hey Damian. Damian, how's it going? I'm doing well. Thank you for having us. Great. Thanks for being here. Uh, so, we want to ask you maybe a couple things. You've had a very busy year. we got to talk about it, right? It's been busy. Very busy. Uh, that video, make uh, Wanna Make You Love Me. Mm -hmm. I can watch it, you know, without the, even hearing anything. And <laughs> I make you, you. I love oh you. Oh, my gosh. So, oh. I'm sure everyone else, you should check it out if you haven't already. It's amazing. Uh, so, congratulations on that. You also co-wrote uh, Don't You Want to Stay, which is obviously one of the biggest songs of the year. Congratulations Thank with all you. that. And brand new single, mm -hmm. dropping very soon. Yeah, next week coming out, brand new single, best thing. Excited for that? Yeah, you know, it's really exciting to to be at a new record label. I've been with Curb now for a year, working with their A&R staff, and really getting to know everybody, and finding and writing new music, and it's just been a really fun process, and I'm just excited to have music out there, you know, that's what it's all about, getting to come out here and hang out with you guys right now, you know, this is what it's all about. Uh, when you're writing your single and just writing music in general, what's that process like for you? Like, do you do you make time to sit down and write music, or does it just like come to you? And how does that work? Well, you know, I find that ideas will come to me when I'm doing something kind of monotonous or boring or ordinary, like driving or taking a shower or something where you're like not thinking a whole lot. Then it's it's like your mind opens up and all of a sudden, boom, you get a great idea. Or sometimes, really not a great idea, but. <laughs> It seems like a great idea at the time. Yeah. You know, the worst ideas always come when I'm asleep. You know, people always talk about, oh, I woke up and I like wrote this down. Well, I have my phone next to my bed. I wake up sometimes and I'm like, oh, this idea is amazing. In the morning you wake up and you hear this and you're like, what was I thinking? What's this text about showering dogs like, and washing? This is washing. terrible. <laughs> so we hear you like Mexican food. I do like Mexican food. It kind of helped you in uh, where yeah. you are today. Can you uh, tell everyone that story? Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of a funny story. When I moved to Nashville, I speak Spanish fluently. I lived in Mexico for a while, and um, I actually I got a bunch of jobs working at all the Mexican restaurants around Nolensville area in Nashville. Because I could speak Spanish, I could sing in Spanish and English in the restaurants. So I had kind of a corner on the market there, and uh, I got paid in chips and salsa, which is great. You know, a young single guy can survive on chips and salsa. So I end up working at these restaurants, and at the same time, this fella, John Rich, hits me up on MySpace. And at the mo at that time, Lost in the Moment had just gone number one, and I was like, yeah, right. John Rich is calling me from MySpace. This is not for real, right? It's like one of those stalker things that happens online. And uh, so it, I listened to the message. I called this person back, and I'm like, is this John Rich? And it was John Rich. And he was like, I love your music. I want to see you live. Can I come see you? And I said, well, I play at this restaurant down here on Harding in Nolensville, if you want to come see me. And uh, he said, all right, I'll be there on Saturday. So at the same time, I know he's coming, and I had been thinking about translating Lost in the Moment, because I would take songs, country songs that were on the radio right then, and I'd translate them for the restaurant just for fun to see if anyone would notice. And so I took Lost in the Moment, and I translated it, and when he came in, I just broke out into this song, and he flipped out. So <laughs> it worked. So John Rich is in the Mexican restaurant having chips and salsa. You're performing yeah. for him. And then what happens after that? Like, Well, I, I played Lost in the Moment. And he flipped out. He jumped up on stage. And he started playing, you know, right along. And then I think he started a set. And both of us are singing Lost in the Moment to one another on stage in a Mexican restaurant. I mean, it, was, it wasn't a stage. There were, like, pallets in the corner. <laughs> we call it a stage. It was kind of a stage, but not really. So, I mean, it was a strange scene. Me and John Rich, two grown men, singing Lost in the Moment to one another <laughs> in a Mexican restaurant on a Saturday evening. And it was just, it's unbelievable. It's its amazing. What a story, huh? It's I mean, crazy. It's crazy. You, know? you so never you know how things are going to go down in it. 
So you Nashville. and John are still good friends, I take it now, right? Yeah, yeah. I wrote for John for three years after that. And, uh, you know, just recently I've got a new publishing deal with a new company and um, all that stuff. But, you know, John taught me how to write songs. And honestly, like, because of him, Don't You Want to Stay really happened, you know? Excellent. Awesome. All right. We need you guys to help us officially welcome Curb Records recording artist Andy Gibson to our stage. (laughs) 